Hey, pilots! <laughs> Drain Man here, and today I have got a very large video. In today's video, we're going to be checking out this 8 inch monstrosity long range quadcopter that's just like a smidge over $200. You absolutely can't beat this. So let's check this puppy out. Let's go. All right, pilots, so here's the deal. When you get into long-range quadcopter flying, you can do it with a four-inch and a five-inch, but things only get better when you move into a six-inch or a seven-inch, but they just keep getting better when you get into an eight-inch or even a ten-inch. And the reason why is because the quadcopter's getting bigger, so it can handle a bigger load capacity. And a bigger load capacity means bigger batteries and bigger batteries mean longer flights and when you're going further you've got to be able to fly far when you want to get into something like this you are looking at some mega dollars you really are because by the time you buy the motors and by the time you buy the frame and you buy something that can handle those motors and that frame and then you put it all together with propellers and everything else you're looking at upwards close to a thousand dollars you really are if you want to cheap out, you can maybe spend 800 bucks. Really, these are facts. But right here in front of me, I got a guy. I, <laughs> right here in front of me, I've got a quadcopter that is just a smidge over 200 bucks and will literally do these same numbers. And you can just continue to upgrade from there because the, the, the possibilities are endless. So let's go ahead and dive in. Let's see what we got. And then we're going to take this out to the field and we're going to see what it can do. So a little bit of background, the company that's making this quadcopter is not a brand new company. It is called Secure and you may be familiar. It's S-E-Q-U-R-E and they are a manufacturer who normally makes like soldering irons and screwdrivers and spot welders and ESCs and all kinds of exciting stuff. So it's really cool to see them venture into drones a little bit, especially long range drones. And this is the 8 inch version. They also have have got a 10 inch version so don't hesitate if you want to check that baby out I will put some links for you down in the video description before we crack this box I'd like to show you the name the name is called Belike it's B K L I that is the type of drone that this is B K L I my best pronunciation is gonna be Belike Okay, and this is the 8, so it is the Blicky 8. <laughs> if you had the 10 inch, it would be the Blicky 10. Okay, so let's open up the Blicky 8. Okay, we are blocking everything, so I'm gonna try to rotate this metal jam. Okay. Now we're getting somewhere. Let's peel the top back. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. All right, let's pull this out. Oh, my God, it's fucking huge. <laughs> Look at this freaking monster. Oh, my goodness. All right, we're going to set that aside. And inside of the bag, you're getting some propellers. You've got a full set of 8 inch Gem Fan 8040 Black Reinforced Sin Lifter Macro Quad Propellers. So that's pretty sweet. And then you've got an extra battery pad. You've got a nice extra long battery strap because you're not going to be strapping your normal 6S batteries. You're going to want a big battery on this thing. So I'm going to go ahead and show you the arms. And holy cow, those are nice looking. They are seven millimeter thick, so they did not skimp out on that. And you can tell by the carbon, this is decent carbon. We are protruded on the ends just a little bit, so we should have some motor protection. That is important. Here's our motors right here. Holy macaroni, they are some monsters. They are all black with a little bit of machined chrome. They are a 2812 1115 kV. 
if you even can wrap your head around that. All right, and that is going to move us down the arm a little bit where we've got protectors for our wires all the way across. Can you see that? They didn't just do a little piece in the middle. It is all the way from end to end. We've got motor protection. All right, let's go ahead and pop the top. I want to jump in and take a look. Uh, top plate and bottom plate over three millimeters of carbon so they didn't skimp out on us. This thing should be able to take a crash or two. And the thing is, the bigger the drone, the bigger the weight, the bigger the weight, the harder the hit. Okay, well done. So as you can see here, that is our XT60 power wire that is running up the back and it's mounted nice and pretty with uh, nuts and screws and that's what's gonna allow you to plug in up here. So that's very nice, okay? Now in the back, we've got our VTX and this is where this quadcopter can change for you. You can get this thing for as little as like 210 or 215 bucks or what was it 218 dollars but you're going to get the 1.6 vtx not the 2.5 this is the 2.5 and then you're not going to get a receiver that'll be up to you to throw in your own little elrs or crossfire or ghost whatever you like to fly plug it in and go if you want what i have here you've got the 2.5 with the elrs uh 2.4 you are looking closer to like 240 or 250 but still, 250 bucks for this drone, ready to go, plug it in and take off. Whew, pretty, pretty good, pretty good. You got props, you got everything you could ask for, you really can't beat it. All right, pilots, let's do a quick VTX check. It does advertise 2.5 watts. Let's see what we got. I'm not sure if you can see that. Holy sheesh, we're running 3.8 watts, 3.5 watts, oh my goodness. All right, so just in case anyone was concerned that they weren't getting the two and a half watts they paid for, uh, you're getting them. Rolling over the specs, very basic, very simple. The camera is a no-name camera. We've got a secure stack. It's a 70 amp, 32-bit stack. They gave us a capacitor. You've got clean wiring to the camera. You've got your jumper. You've got your jumper to your VTX, and then you've got your jumper to your ELRS receiver. I mean, it doesn't get more basic and simple than that. We've got our antenna on. I'm ready. We've got two batteries here. They are recommending a 5,000 thousand milliamp hour battery i just don't have that so i'm going to test out this 2250 and i'm going to test out this whopping 3300 both of these are very large and very heavy and have tons of milliamps inside of them i don't see why we can't get plenty of distance so i'm excited to see how they do i'm going to go ahead and jump into beta flight fine tune everything make sure everything's set up perfectly i'm going to put on my propellers and we're going to head out to the field let's see how it goes Come on, let's go. <laughs> All right, pilots, there we are. We are strapped with props and looking good. We've got our battery on. This is the 2250. This is less than half of what's recommended, but right now I just wanna feel it out, see how it's gonna do. We're just gonna do a slight little hover test, kinda of just cruise around just a bit and see how it does. Make sure everything even works on this thing. And then from there, we're gonna take her to the next step. All right, here we go. Ready, ladies? Okay. Dude. Yeah. It got worse. What is that? Dude, it was literally trying to fly away. 
thing is flying crazy, dude. It was like literally taking off and I was not pressing the throttle or anything. So we were getting like it had a bad tune. So that's why I tightened the stack up. But we gotta see what's going on with this thing. <gasps> oh my God, look, my motor, my motor's being held by one screw. <gasps> Two screws missing here. Three screws missing here. Oh my God. Okay, I think we found our problem. I went and tightened the stack because I thought the stack was the problem. I was like, dang, I should have brought Betafly. I got a bad tune, hot motors. Uh, <laughs> the motors just aren't tight. And during the overview, I took the top plate off and I reviewed everything and I snugged all this back up tight. So my, my top plate, camera plate, all this stuff is snug. I, I tightened up all of these, but these are from the factory. I didn't think I would have to tighten these, but I guess Secure wants us to secure our motors ourselves. Look at this, look. I'm pretty sure I found the problem. All right, I'm going to tighten this back up and we're going to try again. Armed. And we're cruising. Let's see what kind of range we get. So far, video looks good. We're losing color just a little bit. Okay. DVR footage. I'm slowing down a bit. Oh, getting choppy. Getting choppy. Getting choppy. I don't know if I'm in the best area. Oh, 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 oh. Okay, we lost video, but we got it back. Okay, we lost it. Okay, that was rough. That <laughs> That was rough. Let's go get it. Literally video was going out, coming back in. I don't know if it's where I'm at antenna placement. I mean, we're pushing two and a half watts. I, I don't, I don't know. I'm glad I made it back though. All right, there she is. We definitely could have handled more footage. All right, so we recovered from our long range. We got a bent prop or two. Uh, did come down in the mud as you can see we got a little sloppy But I hit pretty hard coming in and as you can see the frame is in fantastic condition This frame is a robust strong frame I didn't want to put myself in a bad position where I went ahead and just lost the whole drum I wanted to bring it back and I wanted to be able to go over it And I want to be able to do what I can tell you that you can do with this drone and that is upgrade it You could put a GPS in it and then we can go out as far as we want and if I have a problem flick it 
return to home I'm on my way back no big deal I enjoyed it it's fun I can't wait to fix mine up make it a little sweeter and better and then I'm gonna take it back out for another long-range flight I'm also not in the best place there's a lot of stuff going on here so eh, maybe somewhere like open fields compound something like that you can really really get some long-range footage so I hope that you guys had as much fun as I did and I will see you on the next one